Good evening, and welcome to The Frank Show. I'm Peter Frank. Now, tonight, there's a lot happening in Romania. The top story here is the International Monetary Fund and the group of international lenders it leads in giving Romania some critical funding. The group ended its review mission here today and said it would delay the next round of funds and its next trip back here until the political situation is resolved. We'll be talking with Jeffrey Franks, the IMF representative to Romania, about what happened today and what is likely to happen in the future. And we'll have that conversation in just a few minutes. But first, we'll bring you our own top stories to put all this in context. And now, here's our headlines. IMF, World Bank and European Commission delay their next round of funding. Romanian president designates new prime minister from the Democrat Liberal Party. Unemployment in the U.S. leaps to 26-year high. Well, the top story in Romania clearly is the decision by the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, and the European Commission to delay their next round of funding, for now, until a government is formed and budget reform measures that these lenders are demanding can be put in place. The IMF-led group, which arrived 10 days ago, said it concluded that the lack of a new budget for next year meant that no decision could be made yet as to whether to disperse the next slice of funds. The European Commission and the World Bank, which together with the IMF has allocated 20 billion euros for Romania, have already said they would delay their next tranche of one and a third billion euros until next year. They had originally thought to disperse the funds in December. Now, all three groups commended the efforts of the government here to achieve the reform agenda. They pointed to certain structural reforms, such as in the areas of social assistance and the unification of public salaries, as examples of progress. But they agreed there was little that could be done on the fiscal side until a new government was formed. Crisis is over. So uh, we don't want to, to you know, be delayed on things that we, don't, we want to get everything ready, that we can move ahead when things are solved. We are just there ready to help. We cannot replace, you know, the political decision. For the IMF's part, it said there was still a chance that Romania could receive its 1.5 billion euro loan by the end of the year. But it said that would require Parliament to approve the necessary budget measures by December 10th. Otherwise, the funding will be delayed until at least January. Now, the IMF-led group has told Romania that it needs to reduce its budget deficit to 5.9% next year from the new estimate of 7.8% this year. Without the passage of the necessary budget reforms, the deficit here could climb to 9% next year, the IMF has projected. Now, the IMF said it would return to renew its review as soon as a new government is in place. Jeffrey Franks, the IMF mission chief here, will join us in a few minutes to discuss these developments further. Now, the impact of all that's happening, the IMF, the government, can sometimes be lost in all the talk of fiscal policy, structural reform, budget deficits. But there's one outcome of all this that will be felt by everyone, inflation. As part of the government's plan to help narrow the budget deficit, officials here plan to raise some excise duties, meaning the amount it charges to import some products. In particular, the higher duties on tobacco will account for higher consumer prices, and that will keep inflation up, at least for the time being. The National Bank of Romania now estimates that inflation will end the year at 4.5%, not the 4.3% previously forecast. Central Bank Governor Mugur Isorescu said Friday, though, that the bank has not changed its 2010 year-end inflation forecast of 2.6%. In commenting on the fact that the price of tobacco has such an impact on overall inflation here, well, Mr. Easter, Mr. Isorescu wins, by the way, our good guess of the day. Quote, I don't understand why the share of tobacco products is so high in Romania, he said, probably because we are heavy smokers. Good guess. Well. We told you yesterday to expect U.S. unemployment to rise in October, maybe to 9.9 or even 10 percent. That's what everyone expected. It rose all right, but to 10.2 percent, a 26-year high and surpassing any predictions. Overall, last month, payrolls fell by 190,000 workers compared with the expected 175,000. There are now nearly 16 million people unemployed in the U.S. Now, it's not too surprising that jobs are lagging the recovery. Employment always comes later in an economic rebound. But just as troubling, though not grabbing the headlines as much, is that the so-called underemployment rate, 
That includes part-time workers who want a full-time job and those who have given up looking has reached a record 17 and a half percent. The impact will mean that interest rates in the U.S. are unlikely to rise anytime soon, and it also puts pressure on the Obama administration to explain why the stimulative measures have not translated into more jobs as originally promised. Econom economists expect unemployment to remain or continue at this level for the next several months. Now, when we come back, we'll have more on our top story tonight with a discussion with Jeffrey Franks, who's the mission chief here from the IMF. Later, we'll bring you our nightly summary of stocks from around the world. We'll be right back. Well, Mr. Franks, thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. Now, originally, you were planning on coming, then you delayed your trip here. Yes. And, and my understanding is you came at the request of President Basescu who asked you to go ahead. And, we and had a on. request from President Basescu, from Governor Isarescu, and from Minister Polja to go ahead with the trip, mm -hmm. uh, despite the political situation. Well, my question is that your, your basic conclusion was that there was little more you could do, given the fact that there's no gov effective government in place here. You knew that before you got here. Wouldn't you have rather stayed home and watched the World Series? I mean, <laughs> is this, was this a wasted trip? Did you find out anything? No, it wasn't a wasted trip. Um, we were able to verify compliance with the targets through in September. Mm -hmm. We were able to make good progress in discussion of some future structural reform legislation, pension reform, fiscal responsibility law, the changes to the unified wage law that are supposed to come into effect next year. We made good progress in those areas. And we also discussed with the interim government what a 2010 budget will look like when we have a government that can submit it and pass it. So it wasn't a wasted trip. We weren't able to bring it completely home, mm -hmm. but we, we made good progress and it'll make our return trip much quicker and easier. And that's not been scheduled yet. That's pending a new government. It will be pending whenever we have the policies uh, that we can work on. Now, in, in, in the three press releases, at least three of them that I saw today by the different groups, uh, the group had some very kind words for the government. Uh, the progress has been made in social assistance area, for example, unifying public compensation. Central bank got complimented, monetary policy, basic agreement, you say, where generally where the country needs to go. Mm -hmm. But what's left undone is rather significant. That is the 2010 budget, the fiscal responsibility law, the pension reform. You say there's broad consensus on the fiscal target. Well, that's the target you established. So aren't we still lacking the basic crux of the resolution here? Well, what we have had is an agreement with the outgoing government on the 5.9 target. That was agreed back in August. And we had discussions with all the major political parties this round and they all supported, in principle, this idea. Right. They voted it in Parliament the other day that they would support this idea. Of course, now's the time to put your money where your mouth is. They've said they were, they're going to support this. Now we need to see the, the votes necessary to actually put it into practice. Is it fair to say, as I've seen, is it fair to say that this country will collapse without these funds coming in? No, I don't think it will collapse. Um, it's a question of where we are in the program. If the program were completely off track and we, we abandoned the, the country, there might be rather serious uh, uncertainties that would result from that. But that's not where we are. We're simply talking about a delay of four weeks, six weeks, uh, you know, a matter of weeks. Mm -hmm. And in those circumstances, it should be relatively easy to bridge over to the next disbursements, as long as the policies get in place eventually. And you, you met with all the, or all the political parties? Some well, we met labor? with the three largest parties. Okay. Labor leaders? We met with labor leaders, entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. and, and is it fair to say that even though these are in different political camps, are they supportive of these measures? Are they willing to do what's necessary? Because well, it's, there are some painful steps yeah. for their constituents. Certainly different political parties have different ideas about how to cut the budget deficit. Right. Some would rather cut spending more. Others would rather cut ta uh, increase taxes more. There's a difference of opinion in the, in the measures. And I'm sure that when we get down to the nitty gritty with a new government, there will be some areas that are going to be quite difficult for them to swallow politically. That's always the case. But 
it, it's a good start to at least have them saying publicly that they support the target and they support the continuation of the program. And how about public sector workers? Well, the public sector size has increased dramatically in recent years and the salaries have increased dramatically in recent years. That is not a sustainable move. So we've got to move that back to a more sustainable position. The share of public uh, compensation in GDP has got to come back down to where it was a few years ago. So we're not talking about necessarily throwing all these people out in the streets. We're talking about trying to, over time, bring, bring this back down to a more sustainable level. And the labor leaders you met with understand this? or they? It, it's well, I mean, they have different. We have different labor groups that represent different groups in society, right. and they might have different views about this. Right. I don't think any labor leader that represents a group wants his group to lose their jobs. That's sure. perfectly understandable. But there's an economic reality out there. People are losing their jobs in the private sector every day in Romania, and the public sector is going to have to take its share of pain. The, the new estimate is 7.8 percent deficit rather than 7.5. Have you agreed to that? Uh, well, it's not a target. Right. Our target is not going to change. It's going to be 7.3. What, what we meant to say this morning was that our best guess is that they're going to miss the target by about a half a percentage point of mm -hmm. GDP. Mm -hmm. So we would like to see additional measures to bring the deficit down to the 7.3. But let's be realistic. We're already in November. It's, it's, there's not a lot of wiggle room yet on, on how to get the deficit down further because we have such a short period of time. Well, that, that missing the target by half a percentage point means you have to be a little bit more forbearant with the missed target. How much forbearance is the IMF willing to have well, looking forward? When a target is missed, uh, the country has to ask our board for a waiver in order for the next disbursement to go ahead. And the board, the first thing they ask when a waiver is requested is, what are you doing to fix this problem in the future so that it doesn't recur? Mm -hmm. So the first thing they're going to ask us if, if they do miss the target in 2009 is, what are they doing in 2010 budget to fix this? Hence the importance of the 2010 budget. Are you confident that if all the steps that the government has already either laid out, maybe not passed in Parliament, but all the initiatives that they have on the boards, if they were all passed, would it meet your guidelines for next year? Are they sufficient? Um, I think we're in the right ballpark. Um, there's a that lot sounds of... sounds like no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I have to be honest with you. When you're talking with an interim government that doesn't expect to be in office in a few weeks, um, we don't get into the details quite as, quite as, uh, okay. as seriously as we might with a government that was still going to be in effect. So there are still some details that might have to be worked out there. But the, the intention is there, and most of the policies, I think, would, would be there. So we would be in the right, in the right range. Um, that said, we're going to have to work on that with a new government, of course. You made a very interesting comment uh, last time you were here, and I don't know if you remember. You were answering questions from the press mm -hmm. six or eight weeks ago, this was. And you were asked what, what initiatives or what directives would the IMF make to the government? And you said, well, it was up to the government to decide exactly how to achieve these goals. That's correct. But I don't know if you remember, you prefaced it with a little parenthetical. You said, within reason, it's <laughs> up to the government. And it strikes me as a curious idea, not to try to put you on the spot, but it, when you say within reason, is there a point at which you all say, look, we are the lenders, you have to follow these prescriptions? Well, the reason I probably prefaced this uh, the way I did was because all governments all over the world always tell you, we'll tackle waste, fraud, and abuse, and we'll improve the collection of our, ta of our existing taxes, and therefore nothing else needs to be done. And that's not reasonable, because we in the IMF have experience with 186 countries across the world, and it's never that easy. And so if a government were to come to us and say, that's what we're going to do, cut waste, cut fraud, nothing else, and on the, on the revenue side, we're just going to collect the existing taxes better, we would say, we don't believe that. It doesn't work. We say that you in might, the U.S. Well, and it doesn't work in the U.S. <laughs> it either. Work, right. I mean, on the margin, you can improve tax collections, right. and on the margin, you can eliminate waste, fraud, and abuse. But usually that takes years, and you only get a little bit each year of improvement. So we would put in a little bit. But if they say, oh, yeah, 3% of GDP, no problem. We'll just cut out the waste and fraud and we're done. No, we would have to say, okay, be specific. Where are you going to cut? Who's going to lose their jobs? What kind of capital spending is going to be reduced? How are you going to change procurement to eliminate that waste? Those kinds of details that we would need to see. So that's what I mean when I say within reason. Well, listen, I appreciate your staying for tonight, and I appreciate your stopping by. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Now we'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll have our nightly summary of stocks, and I'll bring you my Friday night commentary. I'm in a good mood tonight, so no complaining. We'll be right back. <laughs>